Hi everybody. This is Jean here uh, from True Love Quotes. I was going to say good morning everybody. It's not good morning. It's evening time. I'm going out in a few minutes. Um, but I just finished editing my um, video of making our Block 11. Jean's Block Party 2018. Block number 11. I can't believe it. It's, it's just rolling along here. Um, took me a while to make this block. And um, I'm not going to show it to you. <laughs> yeah. Um it it's it's a it's an easy block. Having said that, there are quite a lot of pieces in the block. There are only two uh, blocks in this block, or two units. One is the half square triangle, done a million times, and one is a four patch, done a million times. There are however, and I'm I'm warning you up front. It's going to take you a while, but it's not hard. Um, there are 48 pieces of fabric in this one block. Um, and don't panic. Don't panic because that's what I'm addressing this week. And I, that's what I've said in my cutting instructions. Fairly easy cutting instructions. Um, we're just working with smaller pieces. We've been working, and as again, I said I'm repeating myself. Um, we've been working with larger pieces, some, you know, five, six inch pieces and strips. Um, this block is simple but there's a lot of pieces in it. And so there's quite a few steps. Uh, before I show you the block, I just wanted to um, show you, I don't know why, but I've, I've, I've been doing this. I wanted to show you this, this it's just a, a box that I actually ship my, some of my small things in for my shop. Um, I had just made this, block, this box up and I just wanted to show you, as we have gone along in this project, this is just my thing, it's nothing to do with you guys, but I just wanted to show you, to keep my blocks really nice, I've wrapped them in tissue paper, um, acid-free tissue paper. And then what I've done is, as you can see here, hopefully, you can see all of my fabrics that I have, uh, that I pull for all my fat quarters and my fabric that I pull. My, um, my background fabric is still on the bolt. So that's just over here. But I just want to keep, because we're going to be, this is going to be several months worth. And I just thought you do, you want to just keep your fabric and your blocks real nice. So that's just a little hint. I, I uh, wrap mine in tissue paper as I go along because heaven forbid something happened to them in your sewing room or if you don't, if you're not blessed enough to have a sewing uh, designated sewing area and you have to put them away, don't want to just stick them in a, in a, um, in a, bag or anything. Um, maybe a real decorative box that you can get for, for cheap. Um, and just keep them. Everything nice and steady. That's how, that's what I've um, that's what I've done. Now I'm putting off showing you this block. It's three fabrics and it's I hope you can see it. This is our block number 11. I hope you can see that. What it is is a pinwheel block, a pinwheel surrounded by this like diamond of um it reads a solid i explain that you just need three fabrics the white background or your background fabric and two other fabrics again fairly contrasting fabrics it's easy but it will take you some time there's not a tremendous amount of of um matching points except for the flying geese units here which are really just half, half square triangles, but we've done them enough. And as I was looking up th some of the blocks to do, I thought I'm going to give you guys credit for um, following along each week, learning a new uh, task or something new. This week, as I and as I was explaining, I perhaps should have done it in prior weeks. In quilting, there's such a thing as squaring up blocks. We haven't done that because we've made fairly simple blocks and all of your blocks have turned out really lovely. Um, this block with so many seams has to be sewn a scant quarter and really you have to square up the individual units. I show you how to do that. Um, and then once your all your blocks are exactly the same size, the construction is a lot easier. So there you have block 11, pinwheel block, um, quite a lot of seams, quite a lot of, of sewing small units. I wanted to get you used to sewing smaller pieces. The blocks we've been doing are, are very beginners, but so is this. But it's a beginner's block that you won't 
fly through. Um, between filming and making this block, it took me a while, um, which was fine. And again, this is more of a lighter, remember I was saying some of our blocks are going to be a bit heavier, um, maybe, you know, maybe four or five pieces of fabric, or your fat quarters, or your um, whatever fabric you're using, maybe a bit heavier. Um, this is a bit lighter because it has more of the lighter background, um, or uh, if, if you're doing a darker background, but it's a little bit... Um, it's just a little bit lighter in feel. So maybe we want to put this, again, when we go to configure our blocks at the end of our block party, maybe we want to put this next to a heavier block, a more intense uh, colors. So that's our block number 11 pinwheel. Um, I, didn't, I didn't do it perfectly. There's one, and I, and I didn't stress about it. I did, as I was saying, my pinwheel, um, oh, I'm going to be telling you, I, I did do a, uh, I'm repeating myself again, of course. I did do a pinwheel block many, many, many videos ago, and I make perfect pinwheels. This is not the construction method of making a perfect pinwheel. This is another way to make a pinwheel, and I didn't get it perfect. And maybe you will or maybe you won't. I don't want you to stress about it, because the end result is just as pretty as anything. Just try. Um, oh, wait, I did, with my squaring up and with my, oops, with my squaring up and with my measuring and with my cutting, this block is exactly 12 and a half inches. So it's important, every seam, a scant quarter of an inch. And then if you find that their blocks can be squared, squared up or down, a sliver, and I show you that, just a sliver, and it really makes the world of difference in the construction of your block. So anyway, that's that. Um, uh, it's Thursday evening. I'm popping out right now. Um, I'll be putting this up on Sunday afternoon. Um, I went to the flower show last week, and I was—I just took some still photos with my um, with my camera, and I don't know how uh, to get them onto my computer so I can upload them. Uh, I am so not a computer whiz, um, but I just thought maybe if you would like to see some uh, the Philadelphia flower show, it wasn't fantastic. It was it was super, but it was more. Every year we go, last year, it was more flowers, oh, spring flowers. This year's this theme was um, wonders with water in water. So it was more like jungle, waterfalls, fantastic, but more plants, more plants. That's what I'm saying. I got lots of pictures, and I just thought maybe I'd do it, you know, what I did on Sunday with my, uh, my daughter and my, my, her, one of my dearest friends, her friend. Um, she's like a daughter to me. So if I find out how to do it, if you want to see some pictures of the lovely plants, I, I'm just going to make a short video, maybe. Um, so that's what I did on Sunday. But this will be going up this Sunday afternoon. I hope you love it. A block number 11 of our block party. Um, have at it. Take your time. And um, let me know how you get on with this. I'd be interested. Not hard. It's not hard. It's tedious. And you have to be careful. But once you get it down, you're going to fly through it. All right, folks, thanks so much. See you later. Bye. Here we are at the beginning of our block, which you have seen the final product. And as you saw in the block that we've done, it has three fabrics. Um, I've chosen my white background fabric, which on this block, the background will show a lot. So I've chosen my white, my tone on tone. And then I've pulled two fat quarters, fairly contrasting. And the one, the a little like diamond or the little, yeah, the little diamond that goes around, I've chosen a smaller print so that um, a larger print might, might be, um, you, you might have uh, little pieces and it might not read more as a solid. This isn't a solid, this green. It has little dots on it, but it reads from a distance a solid. And that's what you want more for your diamond that has gone around your little pinwheel block, which my pinwheel block and my little cornerstones are this black and white fabric with the floral. So they're my three fabrics that I've pulled. And here are my cutting instructions for this quilt. Um, as you know, um, you've, you've done this enough that you can cut. This may take you a while, and as, as I, um, I will explain, or as, as I was explaining, this block is a very simple block. It may not look it, but it is. What we're concentrating on this week is more 
tiny pieces, a lot more pieces in a block. That doesn't necessarily mean it's hard. It means you're going to have to concentrate on smaller pieces. We have been working with large, as you know, almost five inch pieces, seven inch pieces, um, you know, six and a half inch strips. This is a block that's very simple. It only comprises, as I said, of two blocks, two units one half square triangle and one four patch. But because it has so many pieces in it, that's where you're going to be wanting to be precise. This block, because it has so many seams, your scant quarter inch, very, very important. Before I get to that, let's do our cutting instructions. For our background fabric, you're gonna be needing three lots of blocks, squares. You're going to be needing six, two, and seven eighths inch squares. You're going to be needing 12, two and a half inch squares. And then, something we've never done, you're going to be needing 24, one and a half inch squares. And you're thinking, oh my word, but you know how to cut. What I do is however you've learned how to cut comfortably. I do my ruler and I butt another ruler up against it to get my nice strip. So you're going to need a couple strips off of your fat quarter or if you're using scraps, you're going to concentrate on cutting 24 one and a half inch squares from your background. Then from your pinwheel in the middle and your cornerstones, you're going to be needing six two and seven eighths inch. And then for your diamond around the block, you're going to be needing to cut 24 one and a half inch squares. Again, you're going to be cutting units, uh, making units much smaller. They're not difficult, but you're working with smaller pieces. And as you progress on your quilting journey and you see a block in a magazine that you like and it has, you know, 10 million pieces in it, you just have to break it down. And that's what this block is doing. As I've said, it's two units. It's, or it's two blocks. It's a half square triangle and it's a four patch. We've made dozens of half square triangles. We've made dozens of four patch, but we're working with very small units. So I'm going to be showing you over at my sewing machine um, how we're going to construct, or um, I'm going to take it over to my machine, how we're going to construct, first of all, the half square triangles. We are going to be making 12 half square triangles. So here I am at my ironing board, and as we've done a dozen times, you're going to get sick of this, but again, a half square, or constructing our half square triangles. Half square triangle is, is, is really, even in um, more advanced quilting, is, is uh, like almost a staple of, of quilting um, units. Um, four patches, half square triangles, a very, very basic thing to make, but it's sort of like the flour that you put in a cake. So I've come over to my machine with my two piles and what I've done uh, right before I've, I've started to sew is what I've done is I've taken the time to put the pretty side of our creased part, part our creased block background onto the pretty side of our other two and seven eighths inch. So it's right sides together, and I've pinned them if you need to. Now, I'm going to be chain stitching this, and I did this last week. I was thinking, though, um, a lot of people perhaps have a, this is just an aside, a sewing machine that has a, a, um, a, 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 not a hole in here. I, I can't explain. Where the needle goes down, you might have more of like a slot. 
And you maybe experience when you're when you're sewing, your fabric goes like in that hole and it's like ah and you pull it out and this end is all like crumbed up. And you're like, what in the world? Because your fabric gets stuck in that slot. I'm fortunate enough with this machine that it's a, a tiny hole and all that's going under my needle is a is the needle, is the needle itself. So when I sew, I don't have any worries that my corners are getting eaten, okay? So when you start, perhaps, again, this is just a little hint, you might want to take a little piece of fabric. When you start, I've started here. You might want to take a piece of fabric and start sewing it your piece of fabric. And that way, when you start to chain piecing, this, this bit of your, your fabric won't get caught because it's already started on your seam that you're stitching. Again, just an aside, what we're doing now is I've pinned my units together. I'm sewing a scant. Remember, I have my quarter foot inch, my quarter inch foot on. I'm sewing a scant quarter of an inch away from that line. I might have to lift up my, and you can do this, you can do this um, separately, or you can chain piece them as I'm doing. I'm doing a scant quarter inch away from that line. And again, chain stitching is just one unit after another. It's a time saver. If you're not comfortable doing it that way, by all means, you can stop and start. back to the cutting mat and what we have we have our 12 half square triangles that we've constructed pressed and trimmed and then we have our 12 12 and a half inch two and a half inch squares put them aside for now we are concentrating on a very fiddly but very 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 simple unit to make we have 24 each one and a half inch squares the solid reads as a solid and the background. What we're wanting to do is make a four patch out of four units. Now, very, very important, take note of this, that you configure your four patch this way. You want the solid or your pattern to be in the top left hand corner and the bottom right hand corner. Very, very important. If you do it the other way, it's not going to work. So, or is it? Oh, no, is it? Oh, yeah, it would do. Oh, yeah, I guess it does. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> I got confused. Wait, maybe I didn't. No, it, so anyway, do it that way. You're going to be wanting your, your, as you're constructing it, yeah, do it that way. I, you must exclude, excuse my, my um, dyslexia. So you're wanting to construct it this way. So what we do is we're going to be, you can pin it by all means. We're making tiny little four patch units. Now I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and show you actually how I'm going to, end, uh, how I'm going to chain piece these. But we're going to end up with a corner inch seam there. It is fiddly. <laughs> but once you get going, we're going to end up with a quarter inch seam there and then our quarter inch center seam we're going to be ending up with a tiny little four patch unit which measures two and a half inches square. 
Like we've never done this small, but you can do it. I'm going to go over to my machine and show you how I'm going to chain piece them. You don't have to. If you're more comfortable doing one at a time, one unit and stopping and starting, that's absolutely fine. You pin here, you pin there, you sew it, and then you come back and then you sew this center seam together. That by all means, if you want to do it that way, you can. But I, I'm comfortable chain piecing all the units together, or, the, or all my pieces together, and then coming back and doing the center block. And I'll show you how I do that. So you've seen I've pressed all of my my uh, my bits to get to, uh, the, to the dark side, and now what I'm doing is we're sewing this center seam. And what I've done is I take my my block with the the uh, it, it doesn't really matter. I've figured it out. Um, I've actually made one. Where is it? I don't know where it is. Um, but but what you do is because we've pressed each seam of our unit to, to the dark side. Look how beautifully that nests, all right? So now we're going to be sewing this seam together. And if you want, by all means, again, you can, you can uh, pin it. But as you see, I'm just grabbing from my, my, block, my units over here. I can nestle them together. I can feel that seam go nice together. And it's just a small unit. So we can chain piece that. I've pressed all of my little um, four patch units to the, wherever they wanted to go and I actually starched them pretty good. Now, um, there's something in quilting that we've not addressed before, but I'm going to address it today because we have so many little units in this block. It's a very, um, sometimes it's a bit tedious, but sometimes it's a fairly important um, step. It's called squaring up your blocks. Now, we have sewn this. We've cut it very well. We've sewn it fairly well, but... There may be, we, and what we want to end up is with this unit, we want a two and a half inch square, okay? Well, with, with, with a human imperfection, with a machine, maybe off one thread or so, sometimes your two and a half inch square isn't quite two and a half inches. It may be slightly, literally, just slightly larger. Or if it's perfect, then you've done it really well. So here is my two and a half inch square on my ruler. So what I can see on this little unit here is literally it's just a thread. It's just that little thread. But that little thread could mean a, a, a big difference in your quilt block, constructing it. So now that one's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the extra few minutes and like that one's a little bit, ooh, what happened there? That one's a little bit wonky. Um, no, it's too, yeah, it's too big over here. So what I'm going to do is if you can see this, hopefully this is in the frame. There's my two and a half and my two and a half. And I got off track right there. So I just have to slice that off slightly with this just a little sliver.
I was just watching, um, I was just playing back this, this part of this video of me squaring up these blocks, and I noticed something, because I don't do this a lot. My blocks turn out, but everybody, a, 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 a dyed-in-the-wool quilter will, will square up their blocks all the time. You know my OmniGrip ruler? You know, I just use it as sort of like a, a ruler to cut. They obviously have things to make quilting easier. And as I was watching my video, I just noticed that this diagonal line, like, duh, is is just for this purpose, or, or another purpose. You see how that diagonal line, that lines right up on my half square triangle. Now, I'm sure you not beginners have known this like forever, but look at that. So my diagonal line, if you have a quilting ruler, put it on your half square triangle, and then I can just slice that off, that little bit there, and that is perfectly aligned when I go to actually sew it. That diagonal is beautifully a square. So now I'm going to finish up my I'm going to finish up my squares, squaring up, but I wanted to just say I'm going to go over to my sewing machine over here. <laughs> this is an invisible quilt. So here's, here, hold on, here's my husband. He came to visit me in my, in my sewing room. Aren't I good? <laughs> So, there's my husband. Say hello, Ian. Hello, Ian. <laughs> hello, Jean. Um, yeah, so he comes to visit me in my room uh, every now and again. It's nice. So, bye for now. so that's my husband, Ian. Um, you can leave now. Oh, okay, bye. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> bye. We have our half square triangles, our four patch, and our 12, 12 and a, two and a half inch pieces. Now, the exciting part, we're going to put our block together. Very important that you configure it properly. So, you might want to take a, a still picture. Maybe I'll, I'll put, put a still picture at the very end because they're, it's just basically four units, but there's quite a lot. There's 12 patches in each unit. So this is, this is the upper left hand corn, uh, block. And I'm just, I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to put this, nope. I'm just going to put this together like this. Nope. I am going to talk. There we go. Nope. <laughs> This goes inside. That's it. That and like that. So that's one one quarter of the block. That's that bit, let's see.
third bit. Not hard, but very, you have to be very, very careful. You can see our pinwheel being made. But again, as you can see, one, two, three, four units. Be very careful. I will take still pictures of this at the very end so you can take a screenshot or, um, you know, concentrate on it. Nope. Pardon me. That's not right. Goes that way. Goes. Nope. <laughs> So very, very important that you concentrate on these units. So can you see our pin wheel? Now we're only going to be sewing, let me just finish this up, we're only going to be sewing, concentrating now, there's our block laid out. All right, so we have our lovely, our lovely uh, diamond as it were around the block around the block around our pinwheel so now I'm going to be I'm going to be taking some pictures of this right now um, and I'll keep it on so you can screenshot it um, so concentrate now and what 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 have we done before we are making four nine patch units right one two three four so again don't worry about doing the whole block now. What we do, take it over, uh, you know, maybe take a picture of it, look at your screenshot, look at your video, make sure all of your blocks are in the same configuration, in this configuration. So very carefully what you're going to do. I'm going to. I'm just going to construct this one row and then come back and construct this row. Forget about this one. I'm going to concentrate on one nine patch, which is easy in itself that we've done. So we're just going to concentrate on sewing this piece to this and this one to that. You know how to do that. By all means, if you need to pin to keep this configuration. So I have very carefully sewn my all of my units together, all of these units into just four squares. You should be really proud of yourself for making this block because there is a lot. It takes longer, but as I said, it's not hard and it's teaching us a few new things, um, which probably I should have shown you from the very beginning of our, our block party, but um, your units should have gone together quite nicely in your four patch unit. Oh, before, if, if you're watching this video and then going to embark on it, very important, very, very important. You take your, your, all of your um, units that are not sewn together and put them next to your machine, somehow on a table, on an ironing board, so you can visually see what you're picking up. This is a lot of of units in this block, not hard, but a lot to keep track of. I can't reiterate that enough how important it is. Now, since we've squared up our blocks, our little units, your block should have gone together very nicely. I think mine's nice. I pressed my seams again. You press in, you press out, you press in, you can nest your corners, your points. This is the, you, you have four flying geese. I, I cut that little point off. I'm, I'm not quite sure why, what happened there. I'm not bothered. Um, you got four points that you have to match up and then you're just nested seams, nested seams, nested seams. So now I've made these and what I've just done 
is I'm now ready. I have two more seams to do. My block is done. I'm so pleased with it. But what I want you to do is for on your four units here, now I want you to square them up again. I want I've sewn my blocks together here, my four patch, one over. I cannot, on this block, reiterate how important it is to set your seams and to press your every unit as you go along. It's so very, very important when you have so much fabric, so many little pieces, uh, units in a block, so very, very, very important that you press as you go and, and, and get your blocks as nice and as flat as possible. Um, now, I've, I have one seam left. Now this, this seam hopefully, that's a little bit more than a quarter inch, but hopefully when we pin this together, oh, um, on the, when you're matching, your, your, as I was saying, you're matching this uh, uh, flying geese here, and then you're just nesting your seams there. But this one is the one, the pinwheel block, we want to be pretty much a pinwheel, um, a quarter inch, maybe you might have to jiggery poker it or not. Um, you're going to be matching that seam up, matching that seam up, and then hopefully your middle seam. If it's a thread off or two, don't worry about it. Um, try to get it as best you can, pinning it as you go along, starting at the middle. One seam should go one way, another the other way, and just go slowly. Just go nice and slowly and pin and pin and pin nesting each of these units and then when you get to the middle just see if you can get that pinwheel just as perfect as it can be and if it's not do not sweat the small stuff I certainly don't I'm going to try my best to get my pinwheel really nice um, however it turns out it looks beautiful I love my block you will love your block so now I'm going to go over and I'm going to see if I can get my pinwheel pretty good There is my finished block. Now, I'm going to confess, <laughs> I'm going to be totally honest, I had a difficult time with this point here, and it's not perfect. Um, and I, I actually unpicked it um, about three times, and then I thought, ah, oh, why am I doing that? Um, I'm not perfect. The, it, this, there's a lot of seams coming in here. I have an actual video, um... Uh, way, way back, I forget, I'll see, I'll, I'll, I'll um, put a caption on what video it was, how to make a perfect pinwheels. Um, it's not, it's not this way to construct it, it's another way, which I can make perfect pinwheels. This construction of a pinwheel is a little bit hard, it, it's hard, um, but I've, I've done it, I'm real pleased with it, it's one or two stitches, one or two threads off a, a, a maybe a sixteenth of an inch, an eighth of an inch, but for the most part, there is my finished block and look at this it pretty much measures 12 and a half inches square so this took me a while um I, I, it takes me a long time because i'm videoing then i'm stopping i'm fine this took me a while um so it will take you a little bit of time this is probably the most um complicated block we've made only in because it's there's lots and lots and lots and lots of steps um but it's not hard um probably making this um pinning the pinwheel and sewing the pinwheels probably going to be the hardest don't don't you know beat yourself up over it if that's not perfect it's a beautiful block i just love it i think it's fantastic um the back is pretty good but look at all those seams i'm really proud of myself um, for challenging me to ch try to show you confident beginners how to have actually constructed this block. 